Hey look, 8 o'clock in the morning, and where am I? I'm at a boot fair. What can I say? I never stop working, do I? Love a bit of work. Here you go, look. My old school. And there's a the boot fair. I've been up since half six, been to two boot fairs already, and now we're at the third one. Check me out. Cool cat. Hello. Here's the bell. So I'm just going into B&Q. There you go. Let's get my paint for my uh, office. Let me get a few other bits what I need. Just been sanding it down. Rubbing down, putting the old screw holes in. So I'm just going to go in there now, get some paint. Going to get some bright white paint, which should be good. Bargain. Get myself some bright white paint for a tenner. Crown paint, tenner, ten litres. Tidy. I've just got back from B&Q. Got me paint. Didn't really need nothing else. I was meant to get a hole cutter for the lights, but I couldn't find one big enough. So I got to do it with a jigsaw. But I'm not doing that because I ain't got a clue. So I'm just having my lunch now. That's my lunch today. And it contains a sausage roll from the boot fair, which, oh mate, they are the nuts. And uh, the rolls from the boot fair as well. And some salt and vinegar. Who knows? So I'm now going to check some messages on Facebook. Reply to a few messages from you lot. Because I'm nice like that. And uh, the missus and the kids have gone clothes shopping. Mmm, what a result. And I ain't got to go. Because I'm doing the office. So I'm going to paint that. Get that painted. And then my mate's coming around this afternoon. Because he's an electrician. So he's going to do the lighting and the plug sockets. And then my other mate, he's a joiner. And he'll be coming around to do a few bits as well. He's got to finish off the floor, the door. He's the one who's basically built it all. So he's a nice chap for doing that. Um, it's a bit of a luck that I've got mates that are uh, all in the trade. I've got a plumber mate as well. Yeah. But I don't need anything plumbing. So, mmm. I don't eat sausage rolls no more. But when I do have one, oh, they're the nuts. Mmm. Very nice. It's a lovely Sunday afternoon, lazing about. Well, not lazing about, but doing me painting. Just not driving around for a change and going here, there, and everywhere. Be nice. Mm. So, yeah, I'll show you my office once I've done the first coat of paint. So, I'll be back to you in a bit. Well, I've been painting. Looks like I've been painting myself, as you can see, but I've actually been painting my office. So, this is the first coat, well, second coat that's on it now. See then? Need to do a bit more filling, but yeah, it's getting there. So yep, that's my little office so far. Lights are going in in a minute, hopefully. So I should be here to do that. And then, yeah, just the floor to do them, and the door. So hopefully by, I'd like to say, the end of next week, definitely, should be done. But yes, so that is it so far today. Looks like it's turned out quite a nice day. Yeah. So, that's not my BM, that's next door's. That one's a 5.30, I wish it was mine. Next car, I think. Sound like that. But yeah. Oh dear. Feel minging and paintified. I'm a shocking painter. But we got it done, getting it done anyway. So hopefully by tonight it'll all be painted, lights will be in, floor left to do, and door, and the shelf, 
and the desk. Oh dear. Got to get myself a new chair as well. Yeah, I'm gonna get I don't know what chair to get. I'm gonna get a really nice chair. So I don't know what to get. I wonder I'm spending probably about hundred quid in a chair. I want a really comfortable chair. Everyone else seems to have a comfortable chair. I want a comfortable chair. So I don't know what to get. Um I have to have a look at IKEA or something like that. The trouble is IKEA is about about an hour away. I don't really want to go across there because I've got to go across the Dartford Tunnel then. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Dunno. I want to fly on I suppose, couldn't I? Yeah, I think I might do that. Yeah, get myself a nice chair. I don't know if to go I don't want to go I don't really want a leather chair. One of them spongy spring chair things. Yeah, I think I might go for something like that. Okay, well, I might do a little bit of filming once the lights are done. That's what I think I'll do. Over and out. So, I'm back and I have lights. I've got one missing. Because you've got to pick it up. <laughs> there you go, I have lights. I have six lights. Which is the result. And I've just ordered um, LEDs, LED bulbs, um, for these three. They're on here. Um, they change colour ones because we're about 19 quid off of eBay, which I'm chuffed about, and I ordered LED white ones for here, um, which cost me about 18 pound for 10. And I've got four with a control, so you can change it from 16 different colors. So I can't wait for those. I have plug sockets. I have no floor as yet. But yes, I am getting there. So I've just done another coat of paint. It's getting better. That's what it looks like at the moment. It's not very white at the moment, but that's still drying. And then I'm going to do another coat. I reckon another two coats, you know. I think I'm on my third coat, which is fantastic. So I think I'm going to need another tub of paint. Um, my mate did say, I think you should get two. I think you'll need two. Should have listened to him, but I didn't. So, yes. Um, I'm sorry it's not been very exciting today. But yeah, it's just been mainly me in here doing this. I've had to get this done because I need it doing now. Because I've got things to review from Samuel Mobile's channel and I want to review them in here. Once the little desks come in, which hopefully should be Wednesday. Fingers crossed, come on Sharon. That's my mate who's doing it. So hopefully he's going to sort that out for me. And then yeah, once I've got the desk in, got the floor, got some tiles coming. Um, yeah, and then we are cooking. Got to get door doors on. Well, door will be on. It's out there. It's ready. And yeah, so um, yeah. Um, someone did just ask me. Um, they think it would be interesting to find out how I started my business. Basically, the reason why I started my business was when I was sixteen. Uh, I started working in a phone shop, which was the one in the town which I live in, which is Faversham. Um, it used to be called Legend, and I worked for him for probably got to be getting on three years. Then I started my own phone shop in um, a couple of towns away from me, which was Herne Bay. Um, that went all right, but it's a shocking town to have a business in, I think. Um, so I closed that when I worked for the same company as my stepdad, which was Shop Fitting, and then I worked there for about a year. And then me, my stepdad and my brother set up a mobile phone shop and that was all right um, until I was a bit stupid. I did a um, hell of a lot of money in the bookies gambling um, on the roulette. So I lost that phone shop through that and got into a bit of debt. Got my mum and stepdad into a bit of debt as well. Um, which was not nice. I do regret doing it, but it's, at the end of the day, gambling is an addiction, and that's that. And then um, after that, I went and worked for a fruit company, packing fruit. But I was like sort of a, I was sort of a manager bit of an area, and um, I basically sent the fruit in, scan the fruit in and out. Which I'll tell you something: if you've not if you've not worked in a fruit factory, it was an absolute laugh. I was working with people my age and I was working with people that were in their 50s and 60s and I tell you something, 50s and 60s, they were loving it. They were really nice ladies. It was, it was really, really good. Well enjoyed it. It was one of the 
don't regret working there at all. It was brilliant. Um, but then um, I left there because a job came up at my stepdad's company again, and I, went and, I was a labourer there, and then I passed my test. And uh, yeah, they have become a driver labourer. And um, after that, oh, we got made redundant. Me and my mate who worked there, who worked there as well, we we're both labourers, and we both got made redundant. And there was a lot of people getting made redundant at that time, which was two thousand and nine, I think. And yeah, so we got made redundant, and I put it around doing a bit of eBay stuff, going to uh, boot fairs, buying phones, and selling them on eBay. I was making a bit of money that way, um, and then. I said to my mate, I'm going to go back into mobile phones and uh, do markets. So he said, I'm up for that, I'll do it with you. So I said, yeah, all right then, we'll do it together. So anyway, the first day we went to our market store, we had, this, we had everything, all the stock, everything, all the unlocking, uh, laptops and everything. First day we went to set our store, it was raining, absolutely pissing it down. So we never got out on the first day, and uh, I think that put us off. So then we looked, we started looking around the town for a shop, and we couldn't find nothing. And we found this office that was up for about, it was up for about eight grand or something like that. And basically, you had to walk through this alleyway, go round the back, up some stairs, and then into there was about eight or ten rooms. Well, anyway, we got the estate agent out, got him down, and. Uh, he basically said, look, this office, they was, in, they was in crap condition, all of them. They was all, most of them were damp and it was shocking. And uh, he goes, he said, if you offer the bloke two grand cash for the year, I reckon you'll take it. So we said, sorry, we do it, two grand cash for the year. So we did and he took it. So we set up a mobile phone shop there, which you, this, still to this day, I have no idea how it worked. Facebook helped us out a lot. Um, Cause obviously we set up a Facebook page and yeah, we uh, it was good. So we we you to get to our mobile phone shop. Bear in mind, this was the first day, and I was shitting myself, thinking, "What have I done?" <laughs> but yeah, you had to walk up an alleyway, then up some stairs, and then round the corner, and into like it was an office, but we turned it into a shop with slat wall and everything. And uh, we was open for about twenty minutes, and got our first customer, and we had that for about. It's got to be nine months a year. And then we opened another one mobile phone shop in the next town. So Rob ran, where Rob lived in Whitstow at the time. So we went and ran that one. And I was still running this one, the one where you had to walk up the stairs. Well, anyway, a shop come available in the town and I was on it. And I was like, I want it. I told the bloke, phoned him up, said, yeah, I'll have it. Definitely blah, blah, blah. I didn't even look at the place. Just said, yeah. I'd look through the window and I'd look, in the, I'd look through the window a couple of times and I went in and had a look around the person uh, the shop that had it before because they would, um, they knew they was going obviously they was sort of letting people look round. So yeah, I went out look in it, said yeah I have it, blah blah blah, and got in there, and that's where I am now. So that is how I set up my business. So at one point we did have two shops, but we split because it was worked out better for a splitting um, for uh, tax purposes and um, small business rates and stuff like that. It's a long thing. But there's no point staying partners, we may as well split. But obviously we still do a lot together. We help, help each other out all the time. Um, if I haven't got nothing, if I haven't got something, then he'll give it to me. Um, and if he hasn't got something, I'll give it to him. So yeah, so that is how I started my business. So I can't remember who, whose name it was, but now you know. So I hope that was a bit of interest to you. But yeah, you found out a little bit more about me. Um, and you're probably gonna go on about the gambling thing. But yeah, um, I went to GA when I was 16 because um, I was gambling on fruit machines when I became 16 and but I probably shouldn't have been. Um, yeah, I spent a bit of money when I was 16 and I uh, went to GA. Didn't play for years. And then when I got the shop, the worst thing about it was when I got the shop with my stepdad and my brother, the day before I... Um, the day before we opened the shop, I went in the bookies, put a 40 pound in a roulette machine and walked out with 1,400. You know what I mean? That is not a thing that you don't want to happen. And oh yeah, yeah, love it, love it, love it, love it. Brilliant. But that's the hook. And then I went back in there another couple of days later 
and won another 600 quid. And I think I won like loads and loads and loads and loads of money for a bit. And then one day I went in there, did like 500 quid, spent it, went minutes, seconds. You know what it's like with the roulette? If you play the roulette, you know what it's like? They're shocking machines. And yeah, so I did that and then, um, yeah, basically I lost a hell of a lot of money over a year. I wouldn't even like to say how much, probably about 30 grand. Um, and yeah, so that was a big mistake, big mistake. But I then banned myself from every bookies in the town, which I'm still banned from now, um, banned for five years. As soon as I opened my shop now, I banned myself straight away, although I wasn't playing them anyway. I, you know what I mean? You've got to do it because at the end of the day, gambling is an addiction. It's all right if you can control it. Um, yeah, I play a lot of scratch cards, but it is under control. Um, obviously, I do scratch cards on video, and um, I'm a partner in, with YouTube, so I get paid for uh, doing videos on uh, my other channel. It's not a great deal of money, but I don't get paid a lot of money for scratch cards or anything like that. It's just I get paid. If you know if you know how YouTube works, then I do get paid for it, but not as much as I spend on scratch cards, probably not. And obviously sometimes I win and sometimes I don't win. But now and again, I probably do too many, but I still don't do, you know what I mean? I don't go extreme mental and spend every penny like I have done in the past with gambling. I'm not like that. I've got a family to support now and that's that. I wouldn't dream of doing that. At the end of the day, my family comes first and that's that. I already spend as much money as I need to spend on scratch cards, not not over food or anything like that, or clothing or anything like that. It doesn't work like that. I'm not in that frame of mind. Um, yeah, I ban myself from the bookies. Temptation. Why Why have the temptation there? Why not ban yourself? So if I go in there, it's a self-ban. If I play that machine, they get done for it. So it's up to them. But I don't go in there because I know I'm not going to play the machine. I don't want to play the machines. Worst thing you can do, roulette, stay off it. It's a, it's a killer. That will get you and get you. That will take you down that will. Roulette is a terrible, terrible game. Don't ever, ever, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I went, when was my mate Stag do? Was it last year? Last year or the year before. And uh, we, we was down in Brighton and we went to casino night and I thought to myself, oh dear, this ain't a good idea. We went in the casino, and I reckon I did about four and a half hundred quid in about 20 minutes playing Chase the Zero. It was me and another bloke playing Chase the Zero, and I reckon between the two of us, we must have done 900 quid trying to play Chase the Zero. The Zero didn't even come out. So it happens, but that was that. So obviously I'm banned from all the roulettes in this area. So there you go. You know a little bit more about me. Um, I'm gonna end the vlog here today. Um, hope you like it and if you do please give it a thumbs up and if you're not ready subscribe buttons down there and i'm going to do a bit more painting get this done um probably do another coat tonight and then do another coat tomorrow night and then wednesday hopefully everything else is going to be finished off thanks for watching and see you tomorrow bye